Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age is back once again, this time on PC, and this release brings with it something quite special. Not only can we run the game at native 4K now, but it's also possible to run at 60 frames per second too, something that simply wasn't possible before, and something that neither PS4 or PS4 Pro versions delivered. It's by far the most exciting development of this PC edition, but what else do we get on top of that? Do we also see improved visual effects and artwork? And about running at 60 frames per second, are there any downsides or visual anomalies as a result? And of course, what does it take to get the game running at 60 frames per second at various resolutions, 1080p, 1440p and of course 4K? So without further ado, let's find out. When Final Fantasy XII came to PlayStation 4, it wasn't surprising that the game was running at 30 frames per second. After all, when the game was designed, it was built around that particular frame rate, with animations, gameplay mechanics and physics, all designed to operate at 30 frames per second. So we weren't really expecting a 60 FPS boost to begin with. And of course, we didn't get that on consoles. But finally, the PC version actually allows us to target higher frame rate. There's the option for a 30 FPS or 60 FPS caps here. There was some trepidation as to what to expect. Previously, games that targeted 30 frames per second didn't always translate very well when doubling the frame rate. Certain animations would look off, and in some cases, certain aspects of the game would continue to run at 30 frames per second in order to, well, not break the experience. Thankfully with Final Fantasy XII on PC, this isn't the case, and we do get a game that runs at 60 frames per second without really too many problems. Some people have noticed that the game occasionally has sped up animations when using certain graphics cards, but from my testing across a range of different Nvidia and AMD GPUs, the experience remained pretty consistent, with no unusual bugs or oddities, at least not with regards to the frame rate. And yes, I have to say running at 60 FPS makes a big difference here. Even though the game doesn't require low latency controls, there's far more benefits to that when running at higher frame rates. The game simply looks and feels a lot smoother to play, whether that be slow camera pans or running across the environment, the extra fluidity really allows you to get more immersed into the game. And of course there's the resolution boost too. PS4 Pro only offered up a boost from 1080p on base up to 1440p, and while the results were an indeed an improvement, there was a sense that it was quite subtle overall. Moving to PC's native 4K output, and there's a bigger boost in terms of sharpness and clarity here. It's perhaps not as great as you might expect, seeing as the game does feature quite a smooth soft image by default. There's a lot of post-processing going on along with a heavy implementation of depth of field. But at the same time there is visibly more clarity across the texture work when running at 4K compared to the 1440p setup on the Pro. I think it's a nice upgrade, but really it's the higher frame rate that is by far the more noticeable improvement when going between the two. So far it's pretty much what you'd expect, higher frame rates and resolutions, but do we get anything else for the PC version? Final Fantasy XII was already extensively remastered for all the consoles. PS4 version featured improved texture work and visual effects over the original PS2 game, something that's clearly visible even when running the PS2 version at HD resolutions. And when it comes to the PC version, well, we get a few extra tweaks, but nothing really too dramatic. Shadows are upped in resolution at the maximum high preset, so as you'd expect, these appear sharper and slightly better defined than on PS4. The other upgrade comes with ambient occlusion. We now get the option to have full resolution indirect shading across the PC version, which not only improves the precision of the effect, but it also expands the radius of coverage as well, adding a little bit more depth to the scene and sometimes creating a bit more darkness to those shaded areas. It's something that clearly stands out when moving between the two formats, but that said, I really feel that the main benefits here come with the ability to run the game at 60 frames per second and also at native 4K. These are by far the two biggest improvements on offer, and the game really does look nice when running at these settings. So far the game holds up quite nicely on the PC, but it's not quite a perfect conversion. In some scenes I did notice that there was a few texture and bump map layers missing on certain surfaces. Now this doesn't occur in all scenes, suggesting that this is probably more a bug than anything else. 
hopefully it gets fixed in a future patch, but in terms of the core art aesthetic, it's the only blemish to appear on the PC game. Even so, factoring in the ability to run at 60 frames per second and at 4K resolution, both provide the PC with a decent advantage over the PS4 Pro. So with that said, just what does it take to get the game running at 60 frames per second? 1080p, 1440p and then at 4K? Well, let's take a look. So far you've been seeing the game running at 4K, fully maxed out, and we were using a GTX Titan X Pascal to do so and the game generally looks very good. But one thing that did surprise me though, is that even with throwing so much GPU hardware at the game, it wasn't possible to get a locked 4K 60. I mean, take a look at this footage here. Running fully maxed out, the Titan X Pascal just can't deliver that 60 FPS lock, and well, the RX Vega 64 fails spectacularly. I was quite simply astonished at these results, I mean, this is a PS2 remaster, not a fully fledged current gen game with the latest visual technology. I mean, something's got to be wrong here, right? Well, it turns out that there are certain visual effects that are incredibly demanding. They sap hardware resources and massively impact on performance. In this case, I found it was the ambient occlusion setting that was delivering such poor results. Full resolution ambient occlusion simply is a massive performance hog in this game, and if you want to target 60 frames per second, you're going to have to lower it. And indeed, when you do so, it becomes a bit more manageable to target 60 frames per second. Dropping multi sample anti aliasing from 8x to 4x, but more importantly, lowering ambient occlusion to half resolution handed in far better results. And we're able to get a 60 fps experience without needing the Titan X Pascal. With these reduced settings, something like a GTX 1080 Ti will get you a flawless 4K 60 on the Nvidia side. But even if we lower the GPU down to a 1070 Ti, for the most part 60 FPS at 4K is indeed obtainable. It's not perfect mind, with the occasional 4 to 5 FPS dips from time to time, but it's generally a very good experience all round. And if you did want to get an absolute lock at 60 with the card, you can just reduce MSAA down to 2x and shadow quality to medium and that should do the job quite nicely and hit PS4 settings. Unfortunately this isn't quite enough to allow the RX Vega 64 to run at 60 frames per second solidly. For that you'll need to turn ambient occlusion off altogether, thus dropping below PlayStation 4 level settings here. And that's also with multi-sample anti-aliasing down to 2x and shadows at medium. It's disappointing to see, but ultimately it's a sacrifice you're just going to have to make when running with AMD cards if you want 4K at 60 frames per second. Moving on to 1440p, and it's clear that if you're targeting a resolution above 1080p, you're going to need higher end AMD GPUs compared to Nvidia. In this case, GTX 1060 will happily deliver 60 frames per second with slightly better settings than PlayStation 4. That's 4x multi sample anti aliasing, and we've got the highest quality shadows. Obviously, you've had to drop ambient occlusion to half resolution, but that's fine. It's not an absolute perfect 60 FPS lock, but if we drop shadows down to medium and reduce multi sampling to 2x, that does the job nicely at 1440p 60 for this card. Unfortunately, the RX 580 really doesn't cut it in a lot of scenes, and if you want to guarantee 60 frames per second, you'll need to move up to the RX Vega 64 to guarantee a complete lock. Of course, you could just drop ambient occlusion entirely, meaning that an RX Vega 56 should get a much closer lock to 1440p 60. But it looks like the Vega 64 is the way to go if you want PS4 quality settings while targeting that high frame rate solidly. Lastly, we have 1080p, and as you'd expect, the requirements are a fair bit lower, at least on the Nvidia side. A GTX 1050 Ti does the job nicely. It's not 100% locked at 60 frames per second, with the occasional 2 or 3 FPS drop. But at the same time, the results are still very good, and most of the time, the game is hitting that desired 60 frames per second target. If you want to get an absolute lock here, then dialing back multi sampling to 2x and reducing shadow quality from high to medium should just about avoid those additional drops in frame rate. And that advice also holds true when using the RX 580. Dropping these settings should deliver performance that gets you a lock here. And that's without going below PlayStation 4 quality settings. 
Ok, so what's the takeaway here? Well, it's fair to say that the game doesn't appear that well optimised for PC, with certain visual features like ambient occlusion simply sapping away performance. And the results are particularly disastrous on the AMD side. There really needs to be more optimization, as the experience really isn't as good as it could be. Our advice is pretty simple here. You'll definitely want to lower ambient occlusion to half resolution, ideally turning off multi-sample anti-aliasing altogether is a good idea, and reducing shadow quality to medium. That should get you PS4 quality visuals, while also making it easier to target 60 frames per second. And indeed that's true whether you're running at 1080p, 1440p or even 4K. It's also something that really needs to be done when using AMD cards, where performance is considerably worse. But ultimately these settings tweaks also gives you an additional performance boost when using Nvidia GPUs as well. Overall then, it's a little bit disappointing that the game isn't easier to run at that particular frame rate, as that was one of the biggest draws of the game, running at 60. But if you are able to achieve a solid 60 frames per second, then the experience really feels and looks good to play here. It's a nice upgrade over the console versions, and it really makes this the definitive edition of Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age. Aside from the disappointing levels of optimization, the only other issue I really have with the game is in terms of accessing the display settings. There are two ways of doing this. There's a checkbox that can be brought up before the game runs, which allows you to adjust basic settings such as the ability to select resolution, adjust general graphical quality, and adjust the frame rate limit. But there's very little to optimise the gameplay experience here. There is a fully fledged graphics menu in the game, but you do need to select the new game option to access it. You're then free to adjust the multitude of settings in order to tweak graphical quality to get better performance on your machine. But once you finish making adjustments, you'll either need to start a new game or you'll need to back out back to the main menu in order to load up your previous save file. Annoyingly, there's no way of accessing these graphical options once the game has actually started, i.e. when you're playing. You'll always have to go back to the title screen to the new game menu, meaning that it's quite a time-consuming endeavour in order to optimise settings for your setup. It's a pain, and it really feels that the menu system is kind of a handover from consoles, and not something that's been specifically created for this PC release. That being said, the work done to get the game running at 60 frames per second, without unforeseen issues with regards to broken animations and gameplay mechanics, is really nice to see. Running at 60 frames per second is awesome, especially at 4K, and it's a step above the console versions. So it's certainly worth considering for fans that want the very best version of Final Fantasy XII available. Anyway, with that said, I'll think I'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this analysis, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also be sure to check out our Patreon page at digitalfoundry.net, where you can download our original high quality version of this video. As ever, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Right.